Hey, welcome to the fourth and final video of the API 28 video series. Today we are going over a practice exam for the API 28, giving you a couple different variations of different practice questions, ones that you might see on your exam, and then we're going to give you an explanation on how to approach each and an answer explanation for the correct answer. And this video is presented by Associate PI. We are an independent organization not affiliated with the institutes or the CPC or API designations. Um, we are an independent organization that helps you pass your exams. I'm Jake. I've passed my API 28 and earned my API designation. I'm going to help you earn yours. So let's get into it. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the fourth and final video. If you want to check out the other videos of our API 28 video series, you can go over to associatepi.com slash videos. All right, so in this practice exam, we're gonna go over three different types of questions that you will probably see on your exam. The first one is a concept question. This will be from part A of your exam. Uh, you'll often see these type of questions formatted as um, in a sentence structure or question structure that says, which of the following is true? So we're gonna cover one of those that you might see from part A of your exam. Example two, this is an example question that you would probably see on part A or part B of your exam. It's kind of a scenario question, kind of a concept question, uh, but it's gonna give you this scenario and say, and ask you, this is an example of what? So you have to analyze the scenario and determine what is that exemplifying. And the last practice question we're gonna go over, example three is a part B scenario based question. These are the toughest type of questions that you will see on the exam. It'll put you in the shoes of an underwriting professional uh, it will be your job to analyze the real life scenario to choose the best answer. All right, so let's get into it with the first question. So question one says, which of the following is true in regards to a personal insurance professional? So this is a sample concept question that you might see from part A of your exam. Now I'm not gonna read through every answer explanation or every multiple choice option. Feel free to pause the video, answer the question on your own, um, because I'm going to move on to the correct answer and explain how to approach and solve this type of question and a bit about the explanation. All right, so we're going to go on to the correct answer now. So here we go. The correct answer is C. They form the public image of the insurer for which they work. Um, so this is a straightforward concept question. It's just asking um, a, about the personal insurance professional, what's true about them, and uh, based on the definition of personal insurance professional and their uh, job aspects, it's true that they do form the public image of the insurance company. So that's just a simple, straightforward concept question that you might see from part A of your exam. And question number two, this is a sample exam question you might see from part A or part B of your exam. You can see it's formatted in the structure that I mentioned saying this is an example of what, so it gives you a scenario, then it says, uh, asks, what does this exemplify? Uh, so this question says, ABC insurance firm targets recent college graduates because college educated students are typically better drivers than non-college educated drivers. This is an example of what? And it give gives you a couple different uh, answer options here. So let's move on to the correct answer. Correct answer is B, demographic segmentation. So here, again, kind of a concept question because you just have to know what is uh, demographic segmentation and it's a type of marketing segmentation. Um, and this exemplifies it. And so it's uh, demographic segmentation is the process of, of dividing the market into groups based on the consumer's characteristics, personal characteristics, such as age, employment, gender, and education. So the dead giveaway here is that uh, they are targeting college educated graduates because of education. So because they are uh, forming their market, their target market based on education, we know that's demographic segmentation. And moving on to the third and final practice exam question of this video. This is the hardest type of question you will see. You can see it's again a real life scenario, uh, but it puts you in the shoes of an underwriter and you have to analyze the case question and determine uh, based on the scenario, um, what action should the underwriter take and, and what is most concerning about this application. Uh, so this one says, Ashley owns a $150,000 home, an $8,000 car, a $5,000 bracelet, a $4,000 necklace, $10,000 earrings, and a $5,000 fur coat. As an underwriter reviewing Ashley's application to schedule her personal property with an inland marine policy, what is the most concerning aspect of her application? So this is a multi-step problem. 
uh, you are put in the shoes of an underwriter, you have to analyze this case, um, assuming that Ashley is applying to your insurance company, you're the underwriter, uh, what is most concerning to you? So first, you have to know what is an inland marine. So right off the bat, you gotta define inland marine, uh, know what it covers, uh, know what the coverages are, and um, j just know what an inland marine policy is and what it covers. Next, you have to know what are the underwriting considerations when you are reviewing an inland marine policy or inland marine application. So you can see here, uh, these are the considerations that a underwriter should make. Um, they should consider about what needs to be appraised. Uh, they should consider the credit score of the applicant, the home value of the um, applicant compared to the property of jewelry, um, the loss history of the applicant, the occupation, and travel tendencies of the applicant. So these are all considerations that an underwriter must make every time they review an inland marine policy. So here, based on that, those first two steps, the correct answer is the value of Ashley's home compared to her jewelry and fur value. So if you go back and look at those six underwriting considerations, we can cross out a couple of the answers here. So um, answer option A, all of Ashley's personal property will require an appraisal. We know that's not true um, because if we look back here under appraisal, appraisal is only required for jewelry that is $750 in value or more. So in this case, it's clear that not all of her property will require an appraisal. Um, answer option C, Ashley's credit score is lower, likely lower than average. We can't derive that from the question, so that's wrong. Um, we don't know anything about her credit score. And based on the characteristics in this scenario given to us, we can't uh, make that assumption based on her credit score. And same as answer option D, prior claim history is unavailable. We don't know that either. We can't derive that from this question. There's nothing mentioning her prior claim history. Claim history and credit score are both important when underwriting an inland marine policy, but these answer options are incorrect. So you can see how tricky that is that they are technically underwriting considerations, but in this scenario, they are not relevant because we don't have that information. So here, the answer option, uh, the correct answer, the best answer is answer B, the value of Ashley's home compared to her jewelry and fur value. So we can see if we go back again, um, home value, that third bullet, bullet there, uh, that the underwriter should consider the valuation of the insured's home compared to the value of the jewelry property. A high value owned jewelry compared to the insured's low value home indicates the possibility of fraud. So that is a consideration that the underwriter uh, should make when reviewing um, jewelry. And also it's the same thing for fur. We just didn't uh, include those underwriting considerations here um, for fur. But uh, that is why answer B is the correct. Uh, answer option B is correct here. And that wraps it up for a practice exam. If you want more practice exam questions just like this from part A and part B of the exam, please download our free practice exam at associatepi.com slash practice exam. Uh, with that, we're giving you exam questions just like this so you can prepare for the type of questions that you will see on the exam. We'll also send you our free study guide to help you take notes on the important topics and probably most importantly, our underwriting guide, which is essentially a study guide specifically for the underwriting topics. Um, this ensures you take notes on the underwriting considerations of every insurance product, which is the most important topic of this exam. So make sure you download that over at associatepi.com slash practice exam. And if you want to read more about the API 28, go over to associatepi.com slash API 28. We've put together a bunch of free resources and blogs, including breaking down the exam difficulty, more exam questions just like this, uh, breakdown of the exam format, most important topics, and the pass rates of each API exam. And that wraps up our four-part video series for the API 28 exam. If you want to review the other videos, the previous three videos of this video series, go over to associatepi.com slash videos. And that is it. I have no doubt that you are going to pass the API 28 exam, but if you have any questions on the content, what to expect on the exam, my name is Jake. You can reach me at contact at associatepi.com. Dot com. I'd be happy to answer any questions before you take your API 28 exam. And that's it for the video series. Good luck on the exam. I know you're going to pass.